coming here to do another episode of Dietitian Talk. As you guys know, I am a registered dietitian with my master's degree in nutrition science, and I am here to help give you guys some good education on topics that maybe you have some misinformation about. So one of the questions that I've been asked quite a bit actually is to speak a little bit about what a refeed day is or a refeed meal, and also some people have asked me the difference you know, what's the difference between a refeed versus just having a cheat meal or free meal. These are terms that are commonly used in the bodybuilding world. These are, are not things that I necessarily learned going through my schooling at Syracuse University, but these are things that I can speak to the science behind them and what I know in my experience with. Um, so let me first talk a little bit about the difference between a refeed and cheat meal versus free meal or whatever terminology you guys use or call it. Um, a cheat meal is basically just what it sounds like. A cheat meal or a free meal is for the most part one single meal where you are sitting down and you are eating whatever you want whether that's healthy or unhealthy. It's basically whatever you're in the mood for and typically you're not counting any macros for it. You're not having to um, meet any numbers. You're not worried about protein, fat, carbs. All that's thrown out the window and you're just having a meal to enjoy and that's going to look different for everyone and even for me that could look different depending on what I'm in the mood for. So really it's more um, typically used as a psychological benefit to someone who is dieting and in a caloric deficit. Um, <clears throat> so it really depends on the person, like I said, and what you're going to eat is up to you. And that's really it. It doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily going to help change your metabolism or increase your metabolism, but it really does help um, that psychological factor. Um, which can be huge for those dieting and in a caloric deficit, uh, calorie reduction maybe for a competition or just for weight loss or whatever your goals are. And adding in something like a cheat meal or free meal can really help mentally keep you going. You know, if you're, you're cutting calories for a long amount of time, doing something like that can just kind of like boost you back up and get you re-motivated. So not necessarily going to see a change in metabolism due to a cheat meal or a free meal. Um, and again, that can be very variable. Um, I have posted my free meal, which has consisted of filet mignon, sweet potato, bread, salad, you know. And the point was, I just wanted to eat whatever I wanted to eat and not have to count it. Um, or I've had other times where I've gone out and had an, a cheat meal or an entire cheat day and just eaten whatever I wanted. And I usually, you know, sometimes I can make really bad choices too, depending on what I'm in the mood for. Maybe I want a cheeseburger and fries and an ice cream. So that's basically a cheat meal or a free meal. They can be very beneficial. And actually that's what I'm currently doing right now. I do a free meal every weekend and that might change. It really just depends on what your goals are for the time. So a refeed meal, um, or a refeed day actually, is quite a bit different, with the purpose being it has more of the physiological benefits versus the cheat meal, like I said, that's more psychological. So a refeed, the purpose of that is to help boost your metabolism for those in a caloric deficit. Again, I'm not really speaking to the general population with this information. This is more for people that are dieting down, you're in a caloric deficit, you know, it's not like you're at a place where you're maintaining, you know, this is really for people who are dieting down, restricting your diet, and you're under calories for the most part. Um, so the purpose behind the refeed is to, like I said, increase your metabolism, and that's done through several processes with your hormones. You know, when you're dieting, it impacts a lot of your hormone levels, some good, some bad. Um, so the big one we hear about is leptin. So I'm gonna speak a little bit more about that. Um, so with a refeed, let me start first with some of the, the ways you may know you need to have a refeed. Again, for those of you that are on, you know, you're dieting right now, caloric deficit, you're starting to feel completely fatigued all the time. Obviously it's normal to feel tired when you're dieting, um, but if you're feeling fatigued 
all the time, you know, you, you're starting to lose your motivation to even focus on your weight loss goals, your exercise goals. Um, maybe you're just, even achy joints, things like that can start to play into you're just overall your body's burnt out and that might be a good sign that you need a refeed. Um, in terms of how often you need to have it, that is going to vary person by person. How often I may need to refeed versus um, someone who's very lean like my husband, aka Shredded Jesus, for instance, could be very different. Um, typically, the leaner you are, the more often you may need to have a refeed. Um, so the leanness is going to make a difference. How much of a caloric deficit you're in also makes a difference. Um, what else here? Your, your amount of exercise, particularly aerobic exercise. So if you're someone who's on a high cardio plan right now, very undercaloried and getting very lean, close to competition, a refeed could benefit you incredibly. Um, so let's talk about why. Like I said, leptin is one of the biggest hormones that you'll hear about being beneficial if you're having a refeed. Um, leptin is kind of known as the starvation hormone. It's a protein that is in your fat, it's, um, it's in your fat cells and what it does is depending on where you're at with your diet, if you're dieting down, what happens is your leptin levels can get quite low. And what leptin does is it sends a message to your brain basically to say you have enough energy stored or you don't. So when you're in a calorie deficit, naturally your leptin levels can start lowering. And this can happen anywhere within a matter of a week with lowering your, your diet, lowering your calories. So your leptin levels are gonna start to come down a little bit. And what happens is that's gonna let your brain know we don't have sufficient energy here anymore. You know, you're, the body's not bringing in sufficient fuel, sufficient energy, which is what we want for weight loss, right? Is to create the calorie deficit. However, um, when you do that, your body does feel like it's in that starvation mode, which is good, you know you're losing weight. At the same time, what that can do is slow down your body's metabolic processes or your metabolism depending on the duration. I'm speaking very generally, but it really depends on the individual and the duration of time that you're on these calorie deficits. I'm not saying in one week of lowering your calories, your body is freaking out and you need to have all these refeeds. It's really gonna depend on the person. Um, and so that's one of the main things that's gonna happen. Your body is in a calorie deficit, your brain then gets that signal that it doesn't have enough energy, and over time your metabolism is gonna slow down, which can then lead to plateaus. And like I said, it can lead to people feeling very tired. So other than leptin, other hormones can also be impacted by being on a calorie deficit. So the other thing that can be impacted is your, your thyroid levels. So the conversion of T4 to T3, that can get decreased and what that will do is actually slow down your metabolism as well. So it's important to think about your thyroid function. The other hormone that we hear a lot about is cortisol. That's our stress hormone. And actually in times of dieting, our cortisol level can go up and typically goes up in a calorie reduction. Um, cortisol levels can actually cause water retention so a lot of times, you know, you may think that you're not losing the weight you need to, and it could be due to that water retention from your cortisol levels. Um, so actually, having a refeed, it's funny because sometimes people feel like, oh my God, you know, you gain a little weight afterwards, right? You should probably, like your number on the scale, if you're checking it the day after, is probably going to be a little bit higher. Um, but it's kind of what I've heard people say is it's, it's taking one step backwards to take two steps forward. The other hormone that can be reduced during a calorie deficit is ghrelin, which is one of your hunger hormones. So when you're dieting and that hormone is reduced, what can happen is you feel so much hungrier Obviously you're gonna feel hungrier because you're dieting, you're cutting calories, but that, that hormone's decreased and then you end up feeling the sensation of hunger that much more. So it kind of works against you in a way. So there's leptin, there's your thyroid hormones, there's cortisol, there's ghrelin, and there's a couple other hormones as well that can all be impacted when you're on a calorie deficit. 
So these refeed days or refeed meals, however you do it, can be extremely helpful to you in your progress. Um, basically for a refeed, it's gonna again be a little bit different for everyone and if you're working with a coach or working with someone or doing it yourself, just kind of be in tune with your body and how you react after different refeed days. Um, with a refeed, the purpose is going to be that you're going to want to increase your carbohydrates significantly. So basically about, you want, you want to have your daily total calories, about 65% of it coming from carbohydrates on that day. Um, carbohydrates are going to be the primary source of increasing your leptin levels. Your leptin isn't going to be as much influenced by protein and actually not at all by fat. So it's really key that on your refeed meals or refeed days that you're increasing your carbohydrates significantly and actually trying to keep your fat fairly low. Um, that can be kind of challenging for a lot of people depending on what your needs are. I'm a smaller person, but I know for my husband, he has to eat quite a bit while keeping his fat fairly low. It can be very challenging for him. Um, you know, this can be a good time to incorporate a lot of fruits into your diet. I love taking advantage of a refeed day and eating, you know, a lot of fresh fruit that maybe necessarily I can't fit into my regular days if I'm on a calorie deficit, my carbohydrates are lower. Um, so for a refeed, I, you know, it really depends on the person. I like to try to eat more nutritious foods, but it can be tough because you're eating a lot more, so you might get really full quickly and you kind of have to force feed yourself a little bit. Um, but like I said, it can be extremely worth it. Whether you're going into a competition or not, that can definitely help your progress. Like I said, you may see an increase on the scale um, or feel bloated you know, that night, the next day, or it may even take a couple days. Um, for me, sometimes, depending on what I've ate on my refeed day, you know, it can take a few days before I really see the impact. And then all of a sudden, whoa, I've been in a plateau for a while, um, which did happen to me when I was prepping for the photo shoot. I was kind of stuck at this weight for a period of time, not doing any refeeds. And then I had a refeed and it was like, you know, my body thanked me. And during that week, my weight came down to an all time low that I hadn't hit in a while. So you kind of have to get over the vanity part for a couple days because you are going to feel a little bloated. You may retain a little water, but it should kind of, like I said, take you, take you forward in your progress. And think about the health benefits in terms of the hormones going on within your body. It's not a bad thing to take a day to eat more. You know, I know some people can be very, by the book, very strict. You know, they want to get on stage, they want to win first place, and, you know, they want to just, you know, eat their tilapia and asparagus and that's it. And that'll work for a period of time. Hell, it worked for me for, you know, my last year of competing. It worked great. But I never, I didn't do a lot of cheat days. I didn't do a lot of, or cheat meals. I didn't do refeed days whatsoever. Um, and I really think I paid for it after the fact. So I really, I really encourage you to focus more on thinking about your health and thinking about what you're doing right now and how that's impacting other things inside your body and not just how you look. And I mean, maybe that's because I'm 30 now and I think more about my health, but um, no, that's not it. I've always been health conscious. That's why I got into the field of dietetics. But, um, you know, I really encourage you to do so. If some people are worried about having a refeed day that it's gonna set you back, I really don't think that's the case. And I encourage you to try it out and see how your body reacts. Um, or do a free meal, like I said, but really in terms of increasing your metabolism um, and improving on your goals and what you're working towards, a refeed can be very beneficial. Um, I think that's about it. So hopefully that helped clarify the differences between a refeed and a, a treat, cheap, free meal, whatever you want to call it. Um, again, this is very important for people who are in a calorie restriction. Um, and I think that's about it guys so hopefully this helped if you guys like these videos please give it a thumbs up for me that helps me out and share it with others if you think this video is beneficial to other people or you think others will benefit from my channel please comment below let me know what other topics you'd like me to discuss and that's it I'll see you soon